Rhetoric is the ancient art of persuasive speaking, which uses several proven techniques to achieve its goal. Rhetorical devices or figures of speech are deviations from normal sentence construction to achieve a greater effect on the reader's mind and are extensively used in rhetoric. In this unit, we will look at several important rhetorical terms. <laughs> Alliteration is a repetition of the same sound for each word in a sentence. Veni, vidi, vici, the Latin phrase attributed to Julius Caesar. Even elephants enjoy eating eggs every day. Betty bought a bit of butter, but the bit of butter was bitter. Allusion is reference to a popular name, place or term from literature. To be in a catch-22 situation refers to the situation faced by the protagonist in Joseph Heller's book of the same name. I was surprised his nose was not growing like Pinocchio's. This refers to the story of Pinocchio where his nose grew longer whenever he told a lie. It is from the Adventures of Pinocchio written by Carlo Collodi. An aphora is a repetition of a word or phrase at the beginning of each successive phrase, clause or sentence. Anaphora in Greek means I repeat. The wrong person was selected for the wrong job at the wrong time for the wrong purpose. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s popular speech, I have a dream, represents an effective use of anaphora as a rhetorical device. Churchill's famous speech of 1940. We shall fight in France, we shall fight on the seas and oceans, we shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air, we shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight on the fields and in the streets, we shall fight in hills, we shall never surrender. An excellent example of anaphora. Anticlimax is a rhetorical device which can be defined as a disappointing situation or a sudden transition in discourse from an important idea to a ludicrous or trivial one. It is when at a specific point expectations are raised, everything is built up and then suddenly something boring or disappointing happens. Hear thou, great Anna, whom three realms obey, dost sometimes counsel take and sometimes tea. A quote from Rape of Locke by Alexander Pope. A funny example of anticlimax is from Jim O'Rourke's song, Ghost Ship in a Storm. And as I'm sinking, the last thing that I think is, did I pay my rent? Climax is the opposite of anticlimax, where the words and phrases are arranged in an ascending order of importance. Let a man acknowledge his obligation to himself, his family, his country and his God. I think we have reached a point of great decision, not just for our nation, not only for all humanity, but for life upon the earth. Antithesis is a literary device that is used to put two contrasting ideas together. Man proposes, God disposes. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, a statement attributed to Neil Armstrong. Speech is silver, but silence is golden. Apostrophe is a figure of speech where the speaker detaches from reality and addresses something imaginary. Shakespeare effectively used apostrophe in all his plays. Here's one from Romeo and Juliet. O oh, happy dagger, this is thy sheath, they are rust and let me die. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. An epigram is a witty, sarcastic statement with an amusing ending. Here's an epigram from John Dryden. Here lies my wife and here let her lie. Now she's a rest and so am I. Candy is dandy but liquor is quicker by Ogden Nash. Euphemism is the use of a milder or inoffensive word to replace an unpleasant term. Pardon my French is a euphemism asking excuse for the use of profanity. She is in the family way instead of saying she is pregnant. Passed away instead of died. The birds and the bees instead of sex. Hyperbole is an exaggeration used for emphasis. I'm so hungry I can eat a horse. I told you a million times. It was so cold I saw polar bears wearing jackets. He is as skinny as a toothpick. This car goes faster than the speed of light. Understatement is the opposite of hyperbole where one writes or says less than what is intended. It is used to create comedy, to indicate modesty or for just being polite. 
In Monty Python's The Meaning of Life, an army officer who just lost one of his legs in a battle responds when asked about his bloody stem. Stings a bit. You get the highest grade in class, an understatement would be, I did okay on the test. You scrape the entire side of your car, an understatement would be, it is only a small scratch. Describing a huge storm overnight, an understatement would be, looks like it rained a bit last night. Irony can be defined as sarcasm where the user intends to express a meaning opposite to what is intended. As peaceful as a rattlesnake is an example of an ironic simile. Water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. The desert was as cool as a bed of burning coals. My friend's kids get along like cats and dogs. A vehicle was parked right in front of the no parking sign. Litotes is the use of double negatives to understate something. It is derived from the Greek word meaning simple. It is impossible to not call it a failure. It is a litotes for it's a failure. New York is not an ordinary city. You are not as young as you used to be. A million dollars is not a small amount. In a metaphor, a word or phrase is applied to something to which it is literally not applicable. Her voice is music to my ears, implies her voice is very soothing to me. He drowned in a sea of grief. Laughter is the best medicine. His words are pearls of wisdom. A simile is similar to a metaphor where two things are compared using like or as. He arrives like a storm and leaves like another. They fought like cats and dogs. He is as strong as an ox. Watching the show was like watching grass grow. Metonymy is a figure of speech where the name of a thing is replaced with the name of its attribute. In the saying, pen is mightier than a sword, pen is a metonymy for diplomacy and written words and sword is a metonymy for military might. The given lines are from Shakespeare, Julius Caesar, Act 1. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. The restaurant has been acting quite rude lately. The library has been very helpful to the students this morning. Onomatopoeia is a word that sounds like the meaning it describes. Famous examples are tick-tock, cuckoo, hiccup and hum. An oxymoron consists of two terms where each term contradicts the other. Business ethics and military intelligence are comical oxymorons used by the renowned stand-up comedian George Carlin. I can believe anything provided that it is quite incredible. Oscar Wilde Modern dancing is so old-fashioned, Samuel Goldwyn. I like humanity but I loathe persons, Edna St. Vincent Millay. Paradox is a rhetoric term consisting of two opposite terms that seem absurd but it is actually valid. You can save money by spending it. This is the beginning of the end. Deep down, you are really shallow. I can resist anything but temptation, Oscar Wilde. Here are the rules, ignore all rules. This statement is false. Parallelism is the use of repeated words or phrases to create emphasis and rhythm in a passage. Easy come, easy go is an example of parallelism where the word easy is repeated for emphasis. My fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. John F. Kennedy For the end of a theoretical science is truth, but the end of a practical science is performance. Aristotle Personification means using a human attribute to describe objects or other non-human things. The wind whispered through dry grass. The flowers danced in the gentle breeze. The fire swallowed the entire forest. The shadow of the moon danced on the lake. The flowers were blooming and the bees kissed them every now and then. Pun is a wordplay made by exploiting two different meanings of the same word. For example, I have been to the dentist so many times that I know the drill. A horse is a very stable animal. Time flies like an arrow. Fruit flies like a banana. An elephant's opinion carries a lot of weight. She has a photographic memory but never developed it. Syllapsis is a figure of speech where a word can be applied to different components of a sentence. Syllapsis is also known as zygma. Here is a clever use of syllapsis from Robert Bloch's book Psycho. It was the knife that a moment later cut off her scream and her head. When I address Fred, I never have to raise either my voice or my hopes. 
heavy white dog training. You took my hand and breath away. They covered themselves with dust and glory. Sanekdoki refers to a word or phrase that is a part of something and represents the whole of it. The use of glasses for spectacles and plastic for credit card are common examples of Sanekdoki. The word bread can be used to represent food in general or money. The word wheels refers to a vehicle. If the world is not treating you well, that would not be the entire world but just a part of it that you encountered. The word plastic is commonly used to refer to credit cards. The word lead is commonly used to refer to bullets. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. For more details, visit our website leximagic.com.